Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glass Hand. So today I'm pretty excited because I want to start showing you the similarities between uh, blueprints in Unreal Engine and maybe some other uh, types of uh, programming that you may be used to in MoGraph such as Expresso. Uh, so this video is going to be pretty basic and pretty simple and pretty fast. I'm going to try to just make some quick parallels between Expresso and between Unreal Engine so we can slowly start to walk you into using blueprints because man blueprints are amazing uh, they're super fast for prototyping and I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with them so let's just go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna do today uh, everyone loves cubes examples right like you open blender default cube cubes everywhere always um, <laughs> in 3d so uh, you know you guys are kind of used to seeing this kind of setup in cinema 4d where you have a null with your controls uh, with a custom user uh, data interface and you can just change the size and that's driving it in Expresso and that's all easy to do and set up and I'm expecting you to probably be familiar with that uh, but then you can do stuff like with Expresso where you can take uh, the time attribute and uh, multiply it and then when you hit play uh, it can keep growing and stuff uh, so that's just using uh, the time uh, going into uh, the multiply and multiplying it by what I had already set up. So that stuff's pretty easy and pretty cool. But uh, if you want to do the same thing in Unreal Engine and you're unfamiliar with Unreal Engine, uh, I hope to make these videos go more and more complex and step you through your understanding. We're going to build some uh, good foundations of blueprints as we go along. So I made a folder called Blueprints. This is just the uh, the basic uh, first-person shooter interface, uh, or sorry, the, <laughs> the basic first-person shooter project under uh, the Epic Games launcher. Uh, so this is in Unreal Engine 5. So what you would want to do is you just want to come over to Library, you want to launch 5, and then you're going to go to Game and you're going to choose first-person uh, starter setup. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it, this is it. So we right click, we go to create a blueprint, blueprint class, and we get this screen right here. And so this screen is kind of interesting because these are all the different types of blueprints that you can create inside of Unreal Engine. All of them are very important and they all kind of work together to create uh, a game or an interactive experience or application. Uh, so the interesting thing is the way it's listed here, we have game mode base, player controller, character, pawn, and then actor. Uh, the game mode base, uh, this is kind of just, as it says, it's like the game mode. So uh, coming from Unity, I know I'm wearing a Unity shirt, which is hilarious with an Unreal Engine video. I love both, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of manager types of ways of doing things, like singleton type ways of programming, like where you have a manager that manages all the game objects. Um, that's kind of how I use game base, uh, game mode. I should say that's kind of how I use that so these are things like scoring keeping track of items you know uh, you know static types of variables those would kind of go in the game mode so that lives above the player controller which is kind of the next one down if you wanted to think of it like that uh, this is actually getting input from uh, the player to control a character and the character is you know a character that can be chosen walk walking around and then a pawn, a uh, pawn can literally be anything that could be possessed. Uh, so that could be like uh, you have like a player pawn or like a human pawn. And then you may have like a car pawn that you possess. Or, and then you may possess like a uh, remote control um, RC copter. You know, there's, there's different things in your games that you can uh, possess as a pawn. And then the actor is something that just lives in the scene that has logic on it but isn't a pawn or a playable character. It's maybe a door, a key, um, a light switch, something that's in the world that you're interacting with uh, that doesn't fall under those umbrellas that I just spoke about, okay? And actor is the one that you're probably gonna be using a lot. So let's go ahead and try to replicate what we did before. We're gonna say BP underscore uh, cube. So this is just gonna be super simple. And uh, when you double click on it, you get the blueprint editor window that pops up. And here we can, on the left, start defining components that go under here. So, uh, of course, we're going to search for a static mesh component. 
Uh, static mesh, uh, of course, you can set the mobility here to static, stationary, or movable. Uh, we'll go ahead and make this one movable. And uh, we're just going to affect the size, right? Because that's, <laughs> that's what we said we were going to do. Um, so for the static mesh, I'm going to go ahead and search for a cube. And this SM underscore cube is perfect. And uh, this, this guy is just something that comes by default in this like uh, preset kind of project. And that's what everything is used to be stacking the pivots in the corner so you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, it's really nice just for prototyping and blocking out uh, for those of you who are just getting into Unreal Engine. Okay, so uh, after that, uh, the construction script is something that I think most... Uh, people gloss over when they start talking about blueprints and it's super super powerful uh, basically this will run in the editor uh, so if we were to take our blueprint um, you could also think of blueprints as prefabs if you come from unity um, it's just a collection of, of different components with logic uh, so you could you could put all kinds of static mesh components in here uh, let's say you were making a um, a shelf <laughs> I don't know. I get think of awful examples here, uh, but you could put all those different static mesh components on the shelf, and then when you shot the shelf, it could you know all the physics could uh, be enabled, and the shelf could break and fall or whatever. Um, so anywho, we're going to get the size of this. So we're going to drag this out, and we're going to search for uh, scale because that's what we um, call it here in Unreal Engine. So we're going to say. Uh, set world 3d scale and we're going to go ahead and plug that in um, so that's going to set the scale to 0, 0, 0 once I hit compile um, so when you hit the compile button it will run uh, here so now the scale has been set to 0 so let's go ahead and create a variable just like we would in cinema 4d and espresso and we're going to call this uh, size just like we did in C4D and we're going to just go ahead and change this to a float and by enabling this I we make this uh, we make this variable public by uh, well I'll show you exactly what that means once we plug it into the scale and hit compile if we were to grab our BP cube uh, we have a rollout that says default and we have a variable that says size uh, now you could change this to uh, you know in Cinema 4D I like to call this controls and then if we compile again, our rollout now says controls. So this could be good. You could set up a lot of different logic here in the construction script uh, it, for your team. If you were creating, um, you know, like let's say this was something that you wanted to use to block out your level. Uh, you could, you know, set this to a certain value and then snap it into place and add more logic. Keep stringing this along and create different controls. Uh, for your for your team to develop your game now using the construction script is really good for blocking out levels doing level design and just having the freedom and flexibility to use and drive some of these variables in the editor uh, but what if we wanted to do something similar uh, like we did in cinema 4d with the time and it increasing over time uh, what we can do is uh, let's just go on event begin play. Uh, this is this event. Uh, these red uh, nodes here are events, and events are basically when something happens. Like usually <laughs> uh, is an easy way to describe it. So uh, this one is when the game actually s starts. So when this uh, actor is constructed in the level uh, is another way you can uh, think of this so when when we begin play uh, we're going to let's just go ahead and get the um, we already have a variable for size so we're gonna get the size um, and then let's also search for uh, a timeline I like to use this uh, add timeline for uh, just different animations and things that I'm doing in blueprints so I'm gonna call this one uh, scale up so we're going to play scale up and let's go ahead and jump in here we're gonna add a new track we're gonna do new float track we're gonna set it to a length of five seconds that sounds great and you can see this is just a simple graph so we're gonna go ahead and add a key at time zero it's going to be zero 
and uh, we're going to add another key and at time uh, 5 it will be 10 okay so uh, those are just simple values uh, we can now rename this um, to we'll just say scale value or something simple and then we're going to go back over into the event graph and we can just multiply these together so we're just going to do a simple multiply uh, in Unreal Engine 5, I think they changed this multiply. Uh, you can actually convert these pins uh, to any different variable type that you would want. So any different data type. Uh, so for instance, we're going to take our scale value and we're going to multiply it by our size that we have right now, which is only a half. Um, and so we're going to take the static mesh that we have, uh, which we could rename this to cube. Uh, let's just hit F2 to rename it to cube. Uh, and then uh, it's going to go ahead and rename everything for us, which is nice. And let's go to scale again. We're going to set the world scale here. And it's going to go ahead and convert the float to a vector for us. Okay, so this is just something super simple. Go ahead and recompile. And let's go ahead and take our player start. This is what's going to launch us into the engine when I hit play. And I'm just going to turn it towards the cube. So let's watch this. And there we go. It scales up. All the way to five seconds. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking this video out. I know it's been forever since I've uploaded a video, uh, but I'm finally getting back into the swing of things. I have a new course that's coming out on MoGraph.com that talks of all about uh, ray tracing inside of Unreal Engine. So if you're interested in building an application that uses real-time ray tracing, I'm going to walk you through pretty much every uh, thing that you'd want to know about ray tracing inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, also, I'm starting to add a lot more of uh, the software ray tracer Lumen uh, into those uh, course videos. So, you know, let me know if you guys are interested in that. We're going to be launching that really soon. I can't wait for you to check it out. Uh, but we're going to be making more videos because I want to talk more about blueprints. Blueprints are amazing. <laughs> like they're so, they're so great. Uh, and I know you're going to feel the same once you get into them. And I'm going to walk you through it. We're going to start from zero and go to hero. So thanks so much for checking it out and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.